So you're thinking about making a change. You've realized that you're better at building igloos than all of your friends. Should you move to Alaska? Hey, Janessa? Hey, where the fuck are my bunny boots? What's up, shufflers? I'm Max, and today we're gonna go over some of the pros and cons that come with living in Alaska, and hopefully answer the question, should you move here? So just a little backstory before we get started. I moved here to Alaska from Wisconsin with my girlfriend about a year and a half ago after we finished college there. So uh, one day I was just uh, deciding if I wanted the tornado or uh, some cheese curds from the local quick trip, and I got a call. And uh, wouldn't you know it, it was the call of Alaska. I'll be uploading a more detailed video about that pretty soon, so please make sure to hit that little bell next to the subscribe button and uh, you'll get notified about all my new videos. Now, let's jump into the list. Pro number one, unique natural beauty. So uh, this is probably the reason a lot of people move here. It's probably why I moved here. It's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, there are snowy mountains, misty fjords, mossy tundras, smoldering volcanoes, uh, hundred mile long glaciers, frozen sand dunes. Uh, yes, there are really frozen sand dunes. There are sand dunes north of the Arctic Circle. Check out Kobuk National Park, the second least visited national park in the U.S. Hey, if you've been there, tell me down there in the comments. I'd love to go there sometime. Oh yeah, and the Northern Lights. Even though I'm not convinced that they're real. So on top of that, there's all the unique wildlife out there. Black bears, brown bears, polar bears, bison, belugas, bald eagles, muskox, moose, mountain goats, orcas, king crabs, seals, reindeer, Walrus, wolverines, wildcat, and rockets. No matter where you decide to live here, it will be beautiful. I live in a tiny apartment right next to a strip mall, and look at the view from my window. Let us pray on this day. Pro number two, outdoor recreation. With such a diverse landscape, you would only expect Alaska to have amazing recreation potential. If you enjoy living an active lifestyle, you will fit right in here. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's raining or if it's negative 40 degrees. Alaskans love their state and they're out there every day. Like for real, every single day. Activities here include hiking, kayaking, mountaineering, ice climbing, skiing. I mean, there are only two actual resorts here, but if you got the will to climb up a mountain or the money to go in a helicopter, you're gonna be set. Paragliding, windsurfing, mountain biking, caving, ATVing, fat biking, ski joring, pack rafting, hunting, fishing, snow machining. If you call it a snowmobile, you will be mauled by a bear. Then of course there are the activities that are pretty unique to Alaska, like uh, dog mushing. I don't know if you've heard of the Iditarod. Believe it or not, there are still a lot of places in Alaska best accessed by dog sled. You can surf the boar tide. So every day in the Turnigan Arm next to Anchorage, there is the second biggest tidal shift in North America. These waves can get huge and they go on for, I think it's like 50 miles. And people love to surf this or go on their rafts. You can go gold panning. Because of the state's remote nature and inaccessibility, there's actually a good deal of gold left here. And it's fairly common for people to stake gold claims. The next video, I may be rich. There's also high marking where snow machines try to go as high as they can on the steep slopes of the mountains. Pro number three, you get paid to live here. So once you've lived here for a full year, January through January, the state of Alaska will begin to pay you just for putting up with all those pesky moose on the road. Welcome to the world of the PFD. The PFD is a fund that divides a portion of the state's oil profits to all Alaskan residents. I've been told that this can come out to between $1,000 and $2,000, but I wouldn't know. I moved here in August. On top of getting paid for doing nothing, you'll get paid more to do not nothing. And if you've never heard of jobs before, I highly recommend them. The median household income here is 10% higher than the national average at $75,463. That means you can spend a little less time worrying about your income and a little bit more time out there on the land. Speaking of being out on the land, if you've always dreamed of that big Alaskan bear hunt, you might consider moving here just for the residency discounts. So for a resident, a grizzly bear tag is about $25, where if you're coming from out of state, you'll be spending at least $1,000 plus the cost of hiring a guide. Pro number four, unique opportunities. 
So my first job when I moved up here involved uh, flying to all the remote bush communities. I would hop on tiny planes, sometimes with only four person capacity, and get to spend a couple weeks at some of the most uh, interesting and remote places on Earth. Alaska is full of one-of-a-kind opportunities like this. The land of possibility. You want to build a log cabin hundreds of miles away from civilization? This is the place to do it. Thought you'd never be able to afford that private island you want? You might be able to here. Fancy living somewhere where you can see Russia from your front porch? It's actually possible. Though unless you're related to someone on Little DME, oh, you're probably gonna have to be a travel nurse or something. Pro number five, food. If you've ever watched the Netflix show Meat Eater, you're probably aware of the delicious array of wild game consumed here. There's reindeer sausage, smoked salmon, spot prawns, fish roe, oysters, clams, halibut, scallops, muktuk, moose, and the legendary king crab. And then there are the berries. So everyone's heard about Alaskan blueberries. Don't get me wrong, they're awesome and they're all over the place. But did you know that the landscape is brimming with thousands of other delicious berries, plants, and mushrooms? Cloudberries, crowberries, saskatoon, raspberries, strawberries, cranberries, lingonberries, watermelon berries, rose hips, labrador tea, fireweed, chanterelles, king bolets, chicken of the woods, oyster mushrooms, morels. Just be careful you're 100% sure on what you're eating. So at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, Max, you convinced me Alaska is amazing. Why don't I just hop in my car and hit the road? Hey, hey, bucko, hold your horses. You gotta listen to some of the cons that come with living here too. Con number one, food. Hey, you notice anything about that last segment? That's right, it was also called food. Most of the items listed there were things you gotta go hunt or forage for yourself or be gifted to if you're not an Alaskan native. And this is my first con about living here. All the best food? It's not so easy to get. On top of that, the restaurants do leave something to be desired. I mean, come on, I'm a foodie. Five compliments on Yelp. I like my chicken wings with the bones still in them. Let's get me a decent Hmong restaurant downtown. Am I right or am I right? There are definitely some hidden gems, but overall I find the food to skew a little burger and a little bit triple D with Guy Fieri. Alaska does not make nearly enough use of its amazing ingredients, and native foods do not get the recognition that they deserve. Con number two, cost of living. I usually don't notice it too much, but the cost of living in Alaska is higher than most other places in the US. On average, groceries are gonna run you about 40% more here. Whereas if you plan to buy a house, expect to spend about 7% more than you would in the lower 48. The things that I notice differing the most in price here are produce, internet, car maintenance, and beer. I mean, nowadays when I go to another local quick trip, case of hams is running me like 600 bones. Of course, this is completely dependent on where you're moving from. Coming from Wisconsin, those beer prices really hit me hard. Con number three, barrier to entry. So back in Pro 2, I mentioned all the opportunity for recreation here. The only problem is that most of that stuff you just can't run out and do. You need equipment and you need knowledge. So to fully enjoy the landscape here, you're gonna want a kayak, a snow machine, rock climbing equipment, bunny boots, a dry suit, a side-by-side, -side, 10 acres of land, fishing equipment, a boat, a rifle, a pilot's license, and a Cessna. So these are obviously huge cost commitments. But at the same time, you didn't move up here because you were excited about checking out all the modern art museums. Luckily, Alaskans are some of the friendliest folk around. Make some friends. They'll be happy to loan you a sled so you can go investigate the Alaska Triangle and reveal all its mysteries. Con number four, difficult winters. All right, so I know this is the one that everyone's been waiting for. Let's talk about Jingle Bell season. The winters are bad here, but depending on where you move to, they might not be nearly as bad as you're expecting. So let's say you wanna to move to Arctic Village, over 100 miles north of the Arctic Circle. You're gonna be in for a pretty nasty Jingle Bell season. Winter temperatures in inland Alaska can sometimes drop into the negative 50s, and that's without wind chill. In addition to that, you're not gonna see the sun for three months. Hope you still kept your spy gear night vision goggles from 2004. Mine is complete darkness. Fairbanks has winter is pretty similar to this, but man, they got some nice hot springs. The more likely scenario is you're gonna be moving to the Anchorage area, in which case they're all right. The temperatures and snow are pretty comparable to Wisconsin winters. It gets cold, but it doesn't really get under like negative 10, minus a few real cold days. And it never gets completely dark. The days get a bit shorter than normal, but it more than makes up for it when you have beautiful 24 hour days near the summer solstice. What's really bad about the winters here are the roads. The visibility is terrible, there's no reflective paint, they rarely plow them, and they don't use salt. Apparently this is because salt attracts moose. So if you decide to move here, I recommend not following my example and arriving in a more appropriate vehicle than a Prius. Con number five, it's remote. So this is my last con about living here. I hope you've been taking notes because you're gonna have to make your decision soon. Alaska, 
It's a remote place. This begins to become an issue in more ways than you might expect. So if you ever want to travel out of state, you got two options. You can drive across the Canadian border into the Yukon Territory, or you can buy an airline ticket for double the price you normally would. Luckily, Alaska is massive, so you could explore the mountains and glaciers until the end of time. If you're a shopaholic and can't get enough of those online goodies, you might initially have trouble adjusting to the higher shipping fees and the longer waiting times. There ain't no free two-day shipping here. I have Amazon Prime, and my orders usually take a week to a week and a half. All right, guys, so that is my list to help you decide whether or not you should move to Alaska. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you still have any questions about what it's like to live here, please let me know in the comments. So now that you've had time to mull over the pros and cons of living here, it's time to make a decision. I have decided you will move here. See you next week at Bingo.